take life easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool, this very night your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? This is how it will be with anyone who stores up things for themselves, but is not rich toward God. Amen. James 4 chapter verses 1 through 6. What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires? The battle within you? You want something that you can't get. You kill, you covet, but you cannot have what you want. You quarrel and you fight. You do not have it because you do not ask God. And when you ask God, you do not receive because you ask with the wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. You adulterous people, don't you know that friendship with the world is hatred toward God? Anyone who chooses to be a friend of this world becomes an enemy of God. Or do you think that the scripture says without reason that the spirit he calls to live in us envies intensely, but he gives us more grace? This is why the scripture says God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Come nearer to God and he will come nearer to you. Amen. Amen. We want to we want to talk about it. Our title for the day is Me, Myself, and I. All right. Me, Myself, and I. This is a lesson on selfishness versus selflessness. Amen. Amen. See, we, we, we have to make sure that we get the distinction here. So that we understand what's really going on. Um, what is selfishness? Definition of selfishness. Where it says seeking, seeking or concentrating on one's own advantage, one's own pleasure, or being, or one's own well-being, without regard to others. Hmm. We know what selfishness is. Now, now let's just think, what does selfishness look like? Since we know what it is, let's see if we can identify it. Selfishness is a trait, by the way, before I go any further, that we all possess. Each and every one of us are selfish. Amen. If you don't believe that, I'm going to let you, the word tell you and let the word show you. James 3 and 16 says, for where you have envy and self-ambition, there you will find disorder and every evil practice. See, sin is wrapped up in us. It's wrapped up in when you go to hauling self. See, if you look, S-I-N, in the middle of sin is that I. That I. See, we, you know, we, we, watch it. Watch it when you go to saying I too much. Because after a while, you're going to really believe that. You're going to really say, I, man, I, see what I did? You know, see what I have? You're going to really think that you did it. You're not ever, you know, you're not going to really acknowledge that God is the reason that you have what you have. Selfishness, it overcomes each and every one of us. Adam and Eve in the in the garden, were selfish. They wanted to satisfy their own desires. They saw something beautiful. Had been warned, had been told, had everything that you could possibly want in the Garden of Eden. They didn't want anything. They didn't know anything else. God had given them, had supplied their needs. They didn't, they didn't know anything about anything else. That's why God wanted to keep them innocent. 
God would have introduced him to whatever he wanted to. I believe Godfreyism says that God would have, would have introduced him to whatever he wanted him to be introduced to. There's a reason why he told them, stay away from the, the tree of the fruit of knowledge. You know, stay away from that. You don't need fool with that. Do what I tell you to do so we can fellowship, so we can hang out together. That's what God wants to do. Don't you know he wants to hang out with you too? He's telling you the same thing. Quit messing with that fruit. And see, that fruit starts with selfishness. See, when we go to hollering me, myself, and I, see, see, me is a pride of life. Yeah, yeah, that's what me and me is. I hate. Hello, look at me. Look what I done. Don't y'all know I'm somebody? Y'all don't act like it when I come through that I'm somebody. Yeah, yeah, that's where we go. That's, that's what that's all about me. You know who myself is? Hmm? Myself is the pride of life. Myself is the pride of life. Pride of the eyes and all of that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Who is me? Hmm? We have the lust of the flesh, the flesh. Pride of life, the lust of the eyes. You can arrange it any way you want to. Me, myself, and I. It incl it's inclusive of us. That's our enemy. Who, who possesses that? Does God possess that or do we? Do? We possess that. This lesson is trying to help us get rid of that. It's telling us selfishness is not the way. Selflessness is the way. See, I want to hear up and get to the end, but I can't go yet. What does selfishness look like? What does it look like? Jealousy, anger, pride, lust. The list goes on and on. But it, remember this one thing, whatever it is, it's wrapped up in self. You, you're not, who forgets self? Who says self is, hey, I'm going to put self last. I'm going to make sure that self is complete. I'm going to take care of everybody around me. And then I'm going to trust that God loves me enough. And according to his word, think more of others. Be more concerned about others and their affairs than your own. He's going to take care of yours. That's his promise. Isn't that what he said? I'll do that. He said, I want you taking care of others. Love you one another as I have loved you. You know, selfishness, discontent. See, when we're selfish, we're very discontent. We, we, you know, we get swole in a minute. We get out on the road to traffic, man. We're trying to get somewhere. And the traffic ain't right and everything. Man, we, I hope Jesus has his ears closed sometimes. Because I'm saying, oh, Lord. Is it me? Is it me, oh Lord? Standing in the need of prayer? Yes, in traffic. Yeah, I have to go when I have to go to the doctor and all. I, I pray. I say, Lord, help me. Keep me safe and keep my mouth. Yeah, yeah, because I want to I wanna mess somebody up with my mouth. Jump out in front of me if you want to. <laughs> but you see what I'm saying about selfishness? Selfishness says that I want to go and I want to move. There's people that block lanes off and tell you everybody. They'll start two miles back saying, get over. Get up and no, oh, here comes somebody driving to get right beside you. You done waited in line to get to where you are. Ain't no way I'm letting them in. <laughs> Amen. You see what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. Help me, Holy Spirit. I'm just telling the truth. See, we got all of us have that issue. We got to deal with something. See, see, my wife don't have that issue. She said, "Baby, let them in," and I'm like, "Huh?" Uh, <laughs> uh, they could have waited just like I did. <laughs> but you, you, you know, selfishness does all that to you. Y'all stay with, pray with me, so I can get through. Pray with me, so I can get through. Not only is it discontentment, it's impatience. Ooh we? Look, you got to get busy when I'm around. You let me show up at my appointments at 10.30 and it's 11 o'clock. 
before they called me back 30 minutes. No, no, see, they'd lock me up if I'd have went to him. <laughs> 30 minutes. And ain't nobody come and said nothing to me. Ma'am, could you reschedule me? Mm-hmm. Well, sir, it's he, just, can you reschedule? I'm fixing to go. I'm done. Impatient. Or pull up to the, to the window, ordering food. Yeah, you you sitting there in line. Now, some other folk got to have their food, too. They in line, too. And you get up there by the time, all this time I've been waiting in line. Why come mine ain't ready? And matter of fact, the fries is cold. Now, because I had to wait. See, we find some things to go crazy about. Ain't nothing wrong with the fries, but we hot. Because we had to wait. <laughs> Help me, Holy Spirit. Yeah, if I ask, I don't want it. I don't want it. We're impatient. You know why we're impatient? Because we're selfish. It's all about us. It's what we want. It's what we think we need. Go to the restaurant. They don't wait on you in time. Have to sit there a little longer than you think you have to sit there. Everybody's hollering, hey, wait a manager. Go get the manager. Yeah, when the manager, when the manager comes. Now, we don't want to leave. Guess what we say? Look like I ought to get it free. <laughs> I had to wait so long. Why well, I got we even to leave. But we, yeah, yeah, we even to leave, but we're gonna ask why come it ain't free. Help me, Holy Spirit. Not only that, impatience, not only impatience, but discontentment, not only discontentment, but guess what else? Greed. Here comes greed. Yeah, yeah, see, materialism is wrapped up in self. Yeah, see, we find ourselves in the pursuit of more and more and more and more. There's not a one in here that got way more clothes than they'll ever wear. Mine is squinched together in the closet. Some stuff I know I ain't going to wear. I'm not going over on the right side because I got to go home. (laughs) But I'm just saying. You know, stuff, is, <laughs> we, we have more and more than we need. Greed, greed does that to us. See, in America, we're saturated with gratification. You know, we're, it's sold to us in every form and fashion that you can get. It's, it's, we want to gratify you. If you're not able to be gratified in this way and that way, uh, uh, we have pornography. We have anything that gratifies you. We have certain meals on, on TV, Every, watch what they have on TV. Everything is to entice you, to tell you you owe it to yourself. Pamper this; it'll take your wrinkles right off your face. Go ahead and get some. Go ahead and get some of this two hundred and fifty dollar perfume. The man will not ever leave you alone. <laughs> you know. See, y'all not praying with me. Y'all, yeah, if you th- thank you, there, brother. Thank you, thank you. See. Y'all ought to talk back to me. You know what I'm telling you is true. (laughs) Amen. We know it's true. See, that greed messes with us bad. Instant gratification. We get impatient. Man, everything goes on with us. Me, myself, and I. Guess what else we'll do? Lying, deceiving, and manipulating. Uh Uh-oh. Hello. Yeah, we go to lying, deceiving, and manipulating. What does that mean? We use tactics. That put people in awkward positions. We'll play the victim. We'll, we'll play the victim. We'll do any and everything we want to do. No, it ain't right. No, it's not lined up right. But then if I don't get to do it, it becomes personal at that point. Because selfishness says, get what you want. That's what self, self is telling you that. That's, you know, that's of Satan. Selfishness is sin. God has designed a way. He's already laid out the way for us to do it. We got to walk in that path. We got to line up. We don't get to do what we want. God always puts a leader in place, doesn't he? God don't ever say, take this whole gang and y'all go. Have you ever seen God with a gaggle of people just going there? Who's in charge? We all in charge. That's how we want to do it. We we don't want to listen to what the leader says. Because we feel like we know better. 
Well, the whole issue is this. Guess what? With the spiritual gifts that God has given you and all of the gifts are for the body so that the body can grow, all you need to do is get in your gift. That's all you're responsible for. You can't do my job. You can't do my because I'm not going to let you do my job. That's one of the things that's going to happen. Can't do it. See, every ministry that comes in Mount Pisgah comes in under the ministry of the Mount Pisgah Baptist Church. Praise team don't run the church. Let me, let me, let me stop. Let me stop. Yeah, yeah, I need to leave the lying and deceiving and manipulating alone because I think that touch is co too close to home. It's all because of me. Philippians 2 and 3 says, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather than humility, value others above yourselves. Verse 4 says, not looking to your own interests, but each to the interests of others. Mm. James 4, 1 and 3 says, uh, I can't even be happy for some of them when they get blessed because of self. Myself won't let me. That envious and that jealousy and that greed. I, I, I can't be happy when you get a new home and I go see it. You know, I can't. It's something that, what they get that old bitch? What they get that for? They didn't need that big old house. You know, why they go get that kind of car? He too old to be riding around in that car he went and got. Why he get that? See, when God blesses us and we we can't be happy for nobody else. We think that God ought to bless us all the time. Everything to pop up, I need some too. Lord, where am I? At? We think we need to get everything. But the Lord blesses us according to his will for our lives. Yeah, and we have to understand that he knows what's best for us. He can't give us a whole bunch of stuff, a whole lot of stuff. And y'all know what I'm talking about. Don't look at me like that. You know what I'm talking about. He can fool around and give you the right thing. You ain't coming up in here. I don't care what's going on. I don't care how the Lord has helped me. I love the Lord. He's heard my cry. You ain't coming. You going, well, look, I, we booked a trip. We will be out of town, Pastor. <laughs> We're going on the cruise. <laughs> we help me, Holy Spirit. I see. See, y'all pray for me. I'm just saying, me, myself, and I, what selfishness does to us. Now, if, if I'm out of line, y'all let me know. Yeah, see, it also takes away our joy. See, see, selfishness ends when. We don't use sound judgment. Um, it breeds discontent. We'll stir up something. Yeah, when we're selfish, we'll stir up something. Well, if I'm not going to get what I want, they're not going to have anything. Yeah, that's where we used to play. But who would know what I'm talking about when you're out there playing and you build your little highways in the dirt. And your brother can't build them, but he comes over and you kick them. Just, just <laughs> keep on. <laughs> Shouldn't have used that one. <clears throat> you, see, you see what I'm saying is that we will do anything. Not only are we selfish, we just like, we, we mean. You know, we're mean. We don't want you to, we don't want nobody to have nothing. For an example, let's, let's look at this, the contrast. We're talking about selfishness and selflessness. Look at the contrast of the Good Samaritan. How many folk come by there? How many of God's people come by there? I'm talking about church. Well, hello, church people. Yeah. <laughs> There's some folk like us because some folk like me come, come by there. Some like you, Ellis. <laughs> the deacon come by there too. What they do, they, they didn't do nothing. They walked in and seen even what was going on and went and crossed over on the other side. Got on the other side and walked by like it was a dead animal. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Help me, Holy Spirit. Then here, here comes this hated Samaritan that nobody likes or whatever. Yeah, yeah, that's different. Thank you. Modern day. And he says, I know what that's all about. I've been there. I've seen what they're like. And somewhere along the way, somebody helped him. You know what he says? He says, come on over here, brother. Let me take care of you. Let me help you. Let me take you into the end. Let me get you a room. 
Let me take care of your wounds and everything. And then, matter of fact, let me leave them some extra money to take care of whatever you need while I'm gone. And guess what? When I come back, I'm going to check in on you and say, everything okay? See, that's the contrast. Where do you fit? Where do you fit? Think about selfishness and selflessness. How far will you go? You know, what's your limit? Pastor, these times is hard. You can't fool with people, Pastor. Ain't you a people? Huh? Aren't you a people? Somebody fool with you? You know, I, I'm scared. I'm going to use his name real quick. Brother Brown will pick up a tortoise on the side of the road. Yeah. You let somebody be in trouble on the side of the road. Ooh, I'm looking at us. Why are you stopping? They need help. But, hey. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know who they are. They, they need help. Come on. They need help, dad. He mean that. And he going on about, about his business. Ain't nobody cracked him in the head yet? <laughs> Did the Lord take care of him? And it's not only in the daytime. He'll get you tonight. <laughs> Lord have mercy. See, y'all need to pray with me. See, I'm trying to help somebody today. I'm trying to help somebody. Really see. Really see opportunity that we have in our selfishness to be selflessness. We got it there. Now, whether we do it or not. See, when you're doing, when you're selfish, you lose your freedom. You just, you know... You're, it, it binds you. You're miserable. You know, you can't be what you want to be because you're enclosed. See, my life is wrapped up in your life in material possessions and things. In envy and greed is what I'm wrapping. Instead of in love. In love for one another. We take that and wrap it up. How can we be delivered from selfishness? First thing is will you pray for it. Everything that we need, we got to pray for. Amen? See, if we, if we pray for, didn't he say, whatever we have need of? Yeah, that, that we come to him in prayer. See, we know them old raggedy, nasty habits we have. Lord, take this away from me. Lord, remove this bitter cup from me. Hebrews 12 and 1. We are encompassed about by so great a cloud of witness. Let us lay aside every weight. Not some. And the sin that so easily besets us. Who has a sin that so easily besets you? Don't nobody in here wrestle with that, do they? Hmm? I guess it's just me. That should have been an amen. At that. Amen. Yeah, that's what it should have been. And he, he, you know, he's telling us, he says, Go to, come in prayer. Everything you need, come to God in prayer. He's ready, willing, and he's able to do just what it is we need to do. Psalms 119.36 says, turn my heart toward your statutes and toward, and not toward selfish gain. Let me be focused on your word and your will and not my will. Let's look at Matthew chapter 6. What does it say? See, see what, what, is our, what does our model prayer tell us? What do we see in that? In this prayer, we tell him, we say, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And all the time, we're hoping that that'll be okay. Do we really know what we're saying? What his will may be for us, we're saying your will may be, we're, we're telling him to bring it on, Lord. We trust you in whatever it is you bring in. Good, bad, ugly, we trust you in it because you're going to see us through it. When we say, thy will be done. We got to, re that's, that's selflessness. That's in, I'm out of it. I take myself out of the picture. It's your will, Lord, not mine. Then we say, give us this day our daily bread. Give us what we need so we wouldn't be expectant of other things. See, he, he told us way back and showed us way back in the Old Testament that he would feed you. Didn't he do it? Yeah, yeah. He said, I'll move you out of your situation. You keep on, what did they do to get them to move out of that situation? What moved God? He heard their, their prayers to him. And God acted on their prayers. You all sure took a long time. God knows what he's doing. Yeah, yeah it might take a long time for you too. But we got to trust him that the reason he ain't acting 
is because he's God and he knows something that we don't know. But what he's wanting us to do is to be persistent and continue to say, Lord, I'm going to trust you. I don't see it. I don't understand it. I don't know how it's going to happen. But, Lord, I know you're great and you're awesome, and I know you can do it. And I'm going to put all my faith and my hope and my trust in you, Lord. I'm going to give it over to you. I, I, I can't take it anymore. I'm not taking these burdens anymore. I'm not going to be mad no more. I'm not going to be frustrated and upset anymore. I'm going to say, here, Lord. And then say, Lord, give me peace. Give me that peace that surpasses all understanding. Nobody said, why you got so much peace? What's wrong with you, Sister T? Why you okay? Baby, didn't they just put you out? Didn't they just come get your car? Huh? If it was me, watch the selfishness come in. You okay instead of having some selflessness and come and saying, baby, God will provide. God will be all right. Where do you need to go? Yeah, you know, I got some place. I got room for you. If I haven't got room for you, we'll try to get you somewhere. We'll try to get you somewhere. See, can, can you see what it requires of us? Honey, I feel so sorry for somebody needs to help them. <laughs> Ain't there some kind of government program out there to help them? See, okay, I'm stopping. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I, 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 hey, is this plain and clear? Do we get it? Do we get it? Does it, does it wake up some things? I got you, son. Do you wake up some things? I got to get this out. Yeah, I work too hard on this. I got to get this out. <clears throat> How can we be delivered from selflessness? Put God first. He died for us. Let me tell you, if we don't understand this thing, and we can't figure it out. God gave us the perfect example. Didn't he? God says, I don't want you to be selfish. So I'm going to lead the way. I'm going to take my only begotten son. And I'm going to take him, send him down to earth. And let him be used and abused by you. Then guess what? I'm going to let you kill him on the cross to Calvary because I love you just that much. I'm that selflessness is that great in my life that I'm going to give you mine and let you kill it. Think about that. What greater example of selflessness bled, hung, and died for me and you? For, I, for, for, for everybody that has ever sinned, he took care of it. All they have to do is accept it and believe it. See, we're free. We're free. Our, selfless, our selfishness keeps us from being free. Yeah. We, won't, we don't believe that selfishness is unbelief. We believe in ourselves. We don't believe in what God has told us. We don't believe in what he showed us in the word. Yeah. Yeah. We say we believe it and we love Jesus and all, but we won't do nothing he tells us to do. We'll leave here and go back and do it just like we've always done it. And then expect Jesus to get it. How are you going to get in that mess? He can when he's already told you how to do it. So the, the ultimate sacrifice was given for us. Don't you know we're going to have to sacrifice something? Selflessness means I'm going to give up something. How about giving up something you won't? You see, you see what I'm saying? Something that really keeps you from being all you need to be. All of us got some stuff we need to give away. We'd be better off without it. And we have to understand selflessness means that's, we, we step out with that here. I got some extra chicken in there. We got two or three freezers at home. I told you how we do it. We got meat stacked up everywhere and whatever. And then we talk about how folk need to do. And then the Lord gets so tired of us, he go and cut the lights off. We sleep. The lights off all night, all the meat ruin. And guess what? We really don't get it then. I think I can file it on insurance. Then I'm going to get me some more meat and feel it right. And a new deep freeze. Help me, Holy Spirit. I'm through with y'all. I'm through with you today. Can, can you get it? Can you see it? Can you see what Jesus is? Can you see about it? Can you see the contrast? 
where we need to be. Get on the right side of where we need to be. Let it be selflessness. It doesn't matter about your past. No matter what I had to do, how hard I had to work. It took I, it took me this long to get this. And I, it don't matter. It makes no difference. You're gonna leave all that anyway. What did he What did he just tell the man in the scripture there? What did he tell him? Huh? When your life is required of you, guess what? Well, who's is it then? All of our lives are required of us at some point in time. Whose is it then? So don't harp on all that stuff. Selfishness is not the way. Selflessness is the way of God. And he showed us that through Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. He showed us that. He gave it all. He paid the ultimate price in selfishness. Who's willing to go? Who will come and go? Who will go? Who will say, for Lord I live and for the Lord I die? Who's going to say, I'm going to turn my back on the world. I'm not doing this anymore. I don't, want, I don't let them drag me away anymore. Well, I would come to Bible study. I would come to all these things they have at church, but y'all have too much. Help me, Holy Spirit. Y'all go too far. See, I'm, I'm just putting it all out there because I'm just, I, you know, really. It's got to come out this morning. I just got to put it out there. Get real. The selfishness is the reason you don't do what you need to do. And you won't do what God asks you to do because you're too much into yourself. And you're not going to deny self. What did he tell us? The only way we're going to please him. He said if we're going to follow him, what did he tell us? The first thing we need to do. The very first thing he needs. So don't sit up in there and say, I love him and I follow him. And you ain't denying yourself because you're lying. We just need to deal with it. We have to realize what's going on. The word is not lying. The word, me, the word means just what it says. Me, myself, and I. Me, myself, and I. I ought to let Aaron put it on and we come on out of here with it. So y'all will really resonate with you. It's not about us. It's all about him and what he's done and what he's doing and what he's going to do in each and every one of our lives. If we'll just let him, if you'll just trust him. Think about that. Me, myself, and I, the pride of life, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes. Think about all of that and where you resonate in those areas. And understand, I need to get over here on this side. Amen. Will you trust God for that? Will you give the Lord a hand clap of praise? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we love you. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we magnify you. Lord, we do glorify you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Hallelujah. Well, the word has been preached. Now this is the part that you come. It's interactive. Now it's your turn. I don't do the convicting. I do the delivering of the message. I'm the mailman. I deliver the package to you. Now, it's up to you to decide whether you're going to receive it or not. Through the power of the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit guide you and lead you in your thoughts and in your ways, because you know what you need. You know where you are in this big puzzle. Will you trust him? Will you trust him on today? Whatever's going on in your life, get rid of it today. Stop. stop. Don't leave out of here and say, well, I wish I'd have got up. What's keeping you? Remember selfishness? Who's that bred from? Who breeds that selfishness in you? We were born in sin. Guess who keeps magnifying it every chance they got Satan? Whispers in your ear. And we just listen and go right on. We got to be stronger than that. We got to trust him in whatever it is that he's doing in our lives that he's going to work it out. So we need to give it over to him today. Do you trust him?